to this day. I can't say for certain exactly what it was, but I know it had bitter, evil intentions. I've been born and raised close to around Ann Arbor, Michigan. My entire life I have never encountered anything weird or out of the ordinary. I am an avid hiker and outdoorsman and have seen it all when it comes to wildlife. I know much of my teenager years and early twenties was riddled with tales of the supposed dogman that lives out in the wilderness, but I have never encountered such a thing, or at least I thought until more recently. This happened to me just a month ago. I'm still having a hard time processing what happened. I usually like to hike and traverse through miles and miles of wilderness. As I'm hiking through the woods, I just have this odd feeling that I'm being watched and it's making me more and more uncomfortable as I go. I continuously look around and check my surroundings, but I don't see anything. After a short amount of time, maybe not even a half an hour later, the woods start to get silent. Now for those of you who aren't outdoorsmen, this usually happens when there is an alpha predator in the area. The only thing that I could think of would be a black bear, which is the only kind of bear there is in Michigan but I seriously doubt a black bear would be stalking me like this. I've also dealt with black bears in the past, but I've never had an experience anywhere close to what I was having with any black bear. I continue to track on back to my truck, having only gone about three miles into the woods, and that's when I started to smell a sickly sweet smell. It smells like death, rotting meat, and wet dog, and it was strong. At this point, I start picking up the pace and jogging back to my truck. I knew whatever I was smelling couldn't be too far away, and as soon as I started jogging, I could hear this thing start keeping up pace with me. It couldn't have been more than 20 yards behind me. I pretty much refused to turn around and look, and I literally kept my pace all the way until I made it to the tree line and ran back to my truck and got the hell out of there. What's weird and also scares me at the same time is that whatever this was, I'm sure could have easily gotten me and taken me out, but it didn't. It just kept pace with me like it was trying to shoo me off of its territory. It's really going to affect everything now from the way I hike to where I hike. I guess there's just some things in the wilderness we were never meant to discover. Back in 2001... Actually, before 9-11 happened, I was interning for this tech job that I would later get, and was doing all sorts of random shifts. I tried to get as much time as possible to be able to work to get the experience that I needed. For those who are curious, it was an advanced networking job working for a bigger company, whose name I won't mention. This also happened north of Seattle, towards Bellingham. If you're unfamiliar with Washington State... This is the most northern town you can be at. You're right by the border of Canada. I had just gotten off one of my shifts this night. It was around April or May. Still wet and cool, but not freezing anymore. Weather was pretty clear, too. Uh, that I can remember. I think it had rained heavily the night before, so things were still wet. The portion of road I was driving on as this happened was South Samish Way. It's a small road just south of Bellingham. I was headed northbound, and for those who don't know, it's densely covered by thick woods on both sides of the road, especially in the summer. In the spring, I remember the foliage had grown back quite a bit, but not quite all the way yet. There aren't any lights on this road either, so at night, it's dark. I drove a black 1998 Ford F-150 at the time, it was my baby for a while before its tranny ended up dying years later. This thing could handle a lot of punishment. I've hit about three deers in that truck, and whatever it was I ran into that night. I'm driving down this road, and I'm doing the speed limit. I'm off to the right side of the road, bursting out of the brush, was this hyena dog-looking thing on all fours. It appeared so fast into the road... I ended up hitting it with my truck, unable to have enough time to swerve out of the way. As soon as I hit it, it hit my truck hard, 
and it seemed to just move off toward the left side of the road. I quickly stopped my truck, grabbed my flashlight out of the glove compartment, and hopped out real quick to make sure there were no damages. Keep in mind, I wasn't afraid of anything at this moment. I just thought I had seen and hit some very strange looking animal. I got out and checked and there didn't seem to be any visible damage to the front grille of the vehicle. I thought this was really odd because even in the past when I had hit deer, there were always marks, dents, fur, blood, and just other marks obvious that I had hit something. This time, it looked like I hadn't even hit anything. I started freaking out, thinking I was hallucinating, inspecting the grill when I began to hear a low growl off in the direction of the woods this thing leaped off into. Never do you hit something as big as what I hit and not have any damage. I stood up so fast and bolted back into my truck, locking the door and throwing my car into drive. I just couldn't believe what I was experiencing. I don't know if it had planned to attack me or what, had I not gotten back into my truck, but I wasn't going to waste any time trying to find out. My name is Gray, and I've owned property out in Tulsa County, Oklahoma, for most of my life. My parents bought it back when they were young, and it's been passed down to me, and so when I die here in the next 20 to 30 years, I'll pass it down to my kids and grandkids. I had a very strange experience a few months ago. Before I continue with my story, let me kind of give you an idea of how the property looked. We had a small one-story house, followed by pastures on all sides of the house. Past the pastures was woodline, but these pastures were pretty large. I'd say at least a few hundred yards in each direction. Not too far from the house was the chicken coop. It was a beautiful, quiet evening in April, and the sun was starting to set outside. My dog Cinderella, who's an old lab and has been my faithful companion all these years in this house, started acting funny. She started whooping and hollering and whining and growling out the window, looking at the chicken coop. I told her, quiet old girl, there ain't nothing out there that's going to bother you. Time went on and she just got more and more anxious and finally she started erupting into continuous barking with her hair standing straight up. At that point, I said, Dog, dog gone it? What's going on with you? Her gaze never left the coop. I figured if there's something going on, she would pick up on it, and this made me uneasy. She went back to ferociously barking and then got nervous again and started pacing around. It wasn't even a minute before she ran out of the front door towards the chicken coop. Since it was a nice evening out, I left the front door and screen door open to let airflow come through. My dog goes running towards the chicken coop and now I'm panicking. I go running after her and I'm not even 30 feet away from the coop at this point and I see this. The only way I can describe it is it was an upright canine. I see this canine animal stand up from behind the chicken coop and my dog immediately stops in her tracks and just starts cowering. This thing was mostly black, with tufts of gray and brown that looked like it ran through its fur, but it had a mane almost like a lion, and really sharp pointed ears. What terrified me most is the way it appeared to look into me with its yellow, glowing eyes, like it was observing me and watching what move I would make next. It didn't show any signs of aggression, nor did it lift or move any of its body other than just standing up and staring at me. After what felt like an eternity, it literally just turned, dropped down to all fours, and ran off towards the tree line. I ran back inside with my dog, both of us scared out of our wits. I locked all the doors and windows, and then realized that if I called the police out here, they're never going to believe me. I've lived here for a very long time, and so if my parents and I have never encountered any such thing, I fear that my chickens are in danger. I didn't know what I can possibly do besides lock up my windows and doors. This happened last summer. My wife and I are born and bred in Kansas. We've always been avid campers. Take it, yes, we do the whole RV thing, so some people don't consider that camping, but to us we do. Especially in our age, as we are in our late 50s. We both planned on retiring 
and decided maybe it would be a good time to invest in a cabin in the area that we're used to camping at. There are some properties that are on Zillow for sale right now that are about two hours away from where we live, which is actually really close to the area where we enjoy camping on the summer times. So after checking out a few places, we finally decided on a place we wanted to call home. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was a cute little two-bedroom, two-bath. Mind you, we don't need a lot of space, as it's just her and I, as our kids are all full-grown and moved out by now. Our first night was just as normal as any other night. After we moved all our things inside and started to unpack, it was pretty fun just organizing and putting things where we thought would look best in the new place. It was close to midnight from what I recall. My wife was already in bed asleep. I was still sipping on a cup of brandy and decided to have a cigarette outside on the porch. I remember it was an overly chilly night. It wasn't winter, but for some reason it was freaking cold out. And foggy too, the mist was just thicker than usual. As I leaned over the side rail, I just gazed into the beautiful wilderness in front of me. We owned about 25 acres, and it was absolutely, well, absolutely secluded. But that's what we wanted. And like I said before, the mist was thick. Thicker than I'm used to seeing when we're out here. I was just gazing into the distance when I swore I saw these yellow, amberish eyes glowing in the distance between the trees. It was pretty far out, so I wasn't exactly sure what it was. It could have been just something, some type of reflection from the moonlight, but I couldn't really tell. But judging off its height, I couldn't decipher what it truly was. I remember just staring it down, squinting my eyes to see if I could see some type of a silhouette figure in the darkness. As soon as my eyes adjusted a little bit better, I noticed this figure was standing upwards like a man. Its silhouette was bulky. I couldn't tell its color. It was pitch black out, but its ears were... They weren't normal. They seemed pointy. Like a canine somehow. Of course, now this was kind of far away, so... I was pretty much guessing on everything I saw outside of the eyes glowing, but I swore that's how it looked. I couldn't move. I was almost frozen in fear and curiosity all mixed together in one emotion. That's when I heard it. I heard the sound of its footsteps, I'm assuming. It was moving away, slowly. I only heard the sounds a couple of times, but I felt it more than anything. Whatever it was was big, because I felt its vibrations of its stepping from my porch where I was standing on the wood. It never did make a sound, which creeped me out even more. At least if it would have made some type of a sound, I may have been able to decipher its breed, or what it was. The next morning, I grabbed my 38 snub nose and went outside to investigate during the daytime. Hell yeah, I'm not going out there in the night. I've seen my fair share of scary movies. I walked about 20 yards into the woods in the direction from the front porch, trying to remember exactly where I saw it in the darkness. After about 15 minutes of searching and circling the area... That's when I found it. The large, four-claw-like scrape against the bark of this large tree. The scrape marks were at least six feet high and deep. These markings were fresh. Like last night fresh. I've never seen markings like this before. And I've been coming out here for the past 25 years. I don't know what it was, but I could clearly take a guess. This happened last weekend, 
We are currently on quarantine, as the, you know, whole coronavirus thing is still happening. Anyways. We were having a double date with our neighbors downstairs. They live at the bottom edge corner of our apartment complex. We usually spend most of the night watching scary movies in the living room. Drinking mixed drinks, beers, snacks like those fancy meats and cheeses with crackers. And usually we have a feast with the barbecue. Unfortunately, we're only allowed to have those electric barbecues out front, but hey, it's better than nothing. And to be quite honest, it's actually pretty darn good for something that's not charcoal or propane. It works. Fast forward to about, I want to say about 11 o'clock p.m., or somewhere around that time frame. We're probably into our third scary movie at this point, as we pretty much binge the whole day starting around 2 or 3 p.m. Take a few breaks here and there, but yeah, it was pretty late. We had the front door open, just to allow some fresh air in. Like I said, they live on the corner edge. What we heard was abnormal to this day. Now, in Southern California, where we currently reside, we're pretty fond to coyotes. They're everywhere over here, so we're kind of keen to how they sound, right? Well, not that night. We were all watching The Conjuring Chapter 2, which is one of my favorites, by the way, when we all heard this gruesome howl coming from outside our door somewhere in the wilderness nearby. It sounded off. It wasn't a coyote. I know what a coyote sounds like. It was so loud. It must have been somewhere within our premises, or at least at the edging by the gates. It interrupted our film, and we don't watch our movies with a low volume. When we first heard it, I glanced at my wife, and she was stunned. I looked at my buddy Ray and his wife, and they just kind of shrugged it off at first. You know, we had some drinks in us, so we were like, <laughs> Somebody got some tasty bunnies tonight. And we just continued watching our film. And I swear, within 30 seconds, the howling came again, but this time, much deeper. I got up from the couch and walked towards the door. I looked through the screen to see if I could see anything outside. Of course, it's kind of hard when you have a metal screen in your face. So I slowly unlocked it, I opened it slowly, and stepped outside. It took about a minute or so for my eyes to adjust. I kept glancing left and right. At first, I saw nothing. I almost shrugged it off, just thinking it was just some coyotes just scavenging some food for the night. When I saw the eyes out in the distance in the brush by the woods, the glowing amber eyes staring back right at me. I don't know if they were truly amber, or just a reflection from the moon above. It didn't matter. Whatever was looking back at me was no coyote. This thing was much too tall. I was stuck there, frozen in shock and fear, all mixed in the same emotion. I couldn't even signal for them to come behind me to check it out. I was just paralyzed in curiosity. I finally darted my head back to tell them to come outside and check it out. When I turned back around to face the wood line, the eyes were gone. Completely vanished. All that stood in front of me was pure darkness in the woods. Nothing more, nothing less. I told everyone what I'd seen. They kind of believed me, but they kind of didn't, if that makes any sense. As they couldn't fully deny my theory because we all heard the howling from inside. I know what I saw. And like I said, that was no coyote. I've lived down here in Baton Rouge for most of my life, as well as the South. 
I'm now 29, and I stay away from any swamp exploration like I used to. It all started back when me and my friends were teenagers. We just had a knack for hiking and wanted to explore the swamps and all the beautiful areas around the state. That was all good and gravy for a while, until just about four years ago, when we came into contact with this abandoned house that was all boarded up along one of the swamps that no one ever goes to. We had traversed quite a few miles in, and that's when things got a bit hairier. It's crazy to travel into territory that hasn't really been touched by people, or so it feels like in a very long time. The house we had found had been abandoned for probably well over 40 years, and to my surprise had barely any, if at all, graffiti and looked like it was just worn and torn down from weather for the most part. The doors were missing, and the windows were missing, but other than that, the structure wasn't too terribly damaged. Being avid explorers, we were wanting to go and check it out. We first entered the living room that practically everything was missing from, and the walls were scratched up and torn. As soon as we stepped in the living room, and the thick, sweet, sickly smell of wet dog, rotting meats and blood filled the air, this immediately made me and my friend regret our choice as we're probably about seven miles out into the wilderness. Why would there be rotting meat and wet dog around? As we exited the living room down a hallway, the smell was coming from an open door at the end of the hall that led down a flight of stairs into darkness, which presumably was the basement. As we got to the entrance to the stairs, we shined our flashlights down, but it was so dark we couldn't see anything, and neither of us were wanting to really go down and check it out. It didn't really feel right, and already at this point, I feel like there was something living in the house. The smell of urine and blood was so incredibly strong at the top of the stairs, it was hard to keep from gagging. It was repulsive. Something was nesting down there in the basement, and we weren't about to go down and find out. I think once we really got a strong whiff of it, we kind of hightailed it out and got the hell out of Dodge. Looking back on the encounter... I'm honestly now surprised some sort of animal was living down in there. It's the perfect place. It's secluded by miles and miles of dense swamp and brush, heavily surrounded by wilderness, protected by an old structure that had been long abandoned years ago, with nobody bothering you. I think we just stumbled upon the den of something we were never supposed to come across. I can't say that it was necessarily a dogman or anything like that, I honestly don't know what it was, but I can't think of a reason why the pungent smell of wet dog and rotting meat would be present. This encounter happened to my wife last year, while working the night shift and coming home at about 4 a.m. We live out in a pretty rural area and we have a lot of desolate rural road to get back to our house. As she was driving home early one morning, she had her windows rolled down since it was in August. She began to hear something loud run behind her. She said it was dark enough that you couldn't exactly make out the details, but you can see something and that there was an outline of something behind her very large running and keeping up with her car. This terrified her. As my wife initially told me, she thought it was someone's Great Dane or something that had gotten loose, and she's terrified of big dogs due to an incident she had with a neighbor's mastiff when she was a child. My wife is doing about 40, 45 down this road, and so she decides to speed up to about 50, close to 60. And this thing, whatever it was behind her, now is running alongside her driver's side, and now she's really freaking out. She's looking over at this thing, and she said it looked like the evilest wolf she's ever seen in her life, and she swears that it looked over and smirked at her, smirked at her in the most menacing, nefarious way. That's when she told me that she shot it into high gear and sped up to about 80. Now luckily for my wife, the stretch of road she was currently on was pretty straight with a minimal number of curves. She said that after a very short amount of time, the wolf creature stopped following her and she lost sight of it. Now as soon as she got home, she was panicked and pale as a ghost and was a sobbing mess. She tells me that whatever it was, it was just there to scare her, that she feels like it was so powerful and so evil that if it wanted to get her, it could have, 
but it just toyed with her. She still works at the same place and still drives the same route because it's really the only way to get to work and has not had any encounter since that day. This encounter happened to me back in 1979 in El Paso, Texas. This was back in my early 20s when I lived there. I later moved out of the state for reasons of employment and I'm glad that I did. What I encountered that night still gives me nightmares to this day and I will never go back. In my early 20s, I reached a pretty good spot financially due to my uncle getting me into real estate and doing it with me and we were making pretty good money at it. So I was a single guy living by myself, living the typical bachelor life. Well, one thing I loved to do was take morning walks and I would walk about five miles every morning. I loved the adventure though. I would usually hike outside of town. This particular hike occurred at the Mammoth Trunk Trail just a ways out of town. This hike is rigid, with a lot of rocks and hills, but after making my way a little bit through it is when I had my encounter. I got up around 4 or 5 and begun my walk. I had done this trail before, so at one point or another I had veered off the path quite a bit, and after about being a couple hours into my hike, I needed to relieve myself. I'm standing there behind a very large stone, pissing on the ground when I begin to hear a low growl that sounds like it's coming from a hippopotamus about 10 feet away from me. I looked over my shoulder and literally not even 10 feet away from me, it's the largest wolf I've ever seen in my life. At this point, I just urinate all over my foot as I'm frozen in fear, looking at this wolf that's literally the size of a buffalo. This thing had piercing amber eyes and its teeth didn't look right. They were really large, and it kind of had a hyena-like look to it, like if you were to cross a wolf and a hyena. I honestly thought it was going to attack me and kill me, but then after a couple or a few seconds, I heard the voices of some distant nearby hikers, and immediately this thing looked over with its ears perked up, kind of like how a dog does when he hears something. As it looked over and I looked over to the nearby voices I was hearing, I looked back over towards the wolf and it was gone. I didn't even see it leave. Apparently, these other people who I was hearing and also veered off the path in the same direction that I was, conveniently, and were only maybe 70 yards away. The way that sound travels in this area is weird, and they sounded much closer, which I was hoping for. After urinating all over my own foot and my leg, and losing all the good in me, I ran out to these people and told them they needed to leave. I explained to them that there's a rather large wolf in the area. They looked at me like I was crazy, but I sat there trying to convince them of what just happened to me, and they seemed like they thought I was genuine enough to convince them after about five or so minutes. I don't know if what happened back there was a dogman encounter. I don't know if it was a dire wolf, but I do know that it was the largest animal I've ever seen in my entire life up close. It was easily the size of a lion, if not bigger. So, a little bit about me. I'm in my early 40s and I love the outdoors, and I'm extremely close with my father. Him and I have been hunting, fishing, hiking, and exploring the woods together for as long as I can remember. He's right. I've learned everything from him. He's a crazy old man too, and he's still going strong, even at 67 years old. Me and my dad experienced something together hiking that we both cannot explain. We both have had a bad feeling about it. This happened to us back when we were hiking around in the woods of Mississippi in the Bienville National Forest in October of 2010. Since he and I have been out in the woods together so much, there's really nothing that we're not prepared for or afraid of. Being avid outdoorsmen for well over half of your life, you come to a point to where you're kind of used to running into everything the woods has to offer. Or so you think. I'm still not sure exactly what me and my father saw that day in October, but I know it was not natural, and I know it was something that wasn't supposed to be there. We had gone hiking for the day, and were probably about three to four hours into our hike when we reached an area in the forest that kind of slopped down almost like a ravine, but only by about 20 or so feet. At the bottom of this slope, though, there was a very large open space where trees didn't really grow 
and it was just a clearing. Now this clearing stretched for probably about a hundred yards to maybe another hundred yards. It was rather large. Me and my father stopped at the top of this slope and just took in our surroundings and sat for a minute. We usually take a break about every couple of hours and have pretty good endurance, so we are about to start pulling out some snacks and water when we both start getting a really weird feeling. We ignored it at first and started eating, but I noticed within minutes I started feeling it more and more. Do you know that innate fear feeling when you know that a large predator is in the area? That's what it felt like, like we were being stalked and watched. I spoke up to my father and said something doesn't feel right, that we need to be on our feet and be prepared. But when I spoke to him, he was already looking off in the woods, and it seemed like his old eyes that were still very sharp caught something off in the distance. He didn't reply to me, but after a few seconds, he calmly said, look over there behind those trees, in a hushed tone. Now I've been doing this with my dad for a very long time, as I've already told you. It's pretty rare that my dad gets scared and when I looked at him and he whispered that to me, the fear on his face scared me because I knew it was something serious. I looked out and sure enough, behind a few of the trees, you could see a large shape. At first, I couldn't quite make out exactly what it was. My first instinct was that it was a bear, but we only get smaller black bears here in the south, so it couldn't have been that. Whatever this thing was happened to be extremely large, and then I went to thinking possibly a grizzly bear, but it was just so dark, and as I'm processing this, I whispered to my dad, is that a bear? He whispered back to me now that this thing looks bigger. We had been watching it for a few moments, but at this point, it started to come towards us into the clearing. Now keep in mind that this thing was probably only about four or five trees into the forest of the clearing. As it started moving towards us, we were able to make out more details of what it was. It stopped right at the tree line and just stared in our direction. What we were looking at was some monstrously tall wolf on two legs. This thing was built like a bodybuilder but was so black I couldn't really make out any details of the face since it was roughly a hundred yards away. Its head stood out. It was enormous. Its arms looked huge and it looked like it had hands with claws on them. Its legs just resembled that of a dog's, but thicker and more muscular in a tapered off waist. I didn't see a tail at all. Me and my dad sat there and just stared at this thing for another couple of minutes. It didn't move. It just stayed stationary, just staring off at us. It didn't even make any noises and I didn't smell anything. I had had enough of this thing though, at this point. I just told my dad we need to get up out of here, and we immediately just packed up our stuff really quick, and got out and left. Since that encounter, we actually haven't gone back to that national forest, and probably never will. My dad to this day doesn't really like to talk about it, and I'll be honest, the thought of it makes me uncomfortable. I live in Ohio and have ever since I was a little kid. I am now in my mid-thirties and just a couple of years ago I went camping with my now wife and heard things that I cannot explain. We went on a weekend camping vacation on one of the Great Lakes actually, and every single night near our tent we would hear these strange sounds. The first night we were awoken to a rumbling growl. This growl was honestly the most guttural thing I've ever heard and sent vibrations through both of our bodies. If this was a predator making this noise, it had to be an alpha predator and had to be the size of a tractor. It would go on and off for a few hours and then it disappeared. The next night though, we kept hearing screams like that of a woman being murdered, not even a hundred yards away from our tent, and it circled all around our camp for most of the night. I've heard people talk about the Michigan dog man and people seeing sightings and reports in this general area but I've never actually seen anything myself. After that camping weekend and after hearing all the strange noises, I can't be so certain what's out there anymore. I know the general wildlife that lives in the area, which is why I'm even more confused and startled by my experiences. I was driving around really late one night, 
It was probably one in the morning, and I was getting back from a friend's party. Now, the neighborhood I live in is obviously residential, but we're surrounded by a lot of thick woods. There's a long stretch of road, maybe a mile or so. There's thicket on both sides of the road that separates the residential area to another. I was driving this road heading back to my place, and I probably had about three minutes until I hit the general neighborhood. As I'm driving, I noticed some eye shine coming from the right side of the road, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. I figured maybe it was a deer, but as I started to get closer, within seconds I noticed it was the hugest wolf head I've ever seen in my life, staring at me from the thicket. What scares me is we don't have wolves around this area, and the thicket and bramble is tall, and so for this thing's head to be above it, this thing would have to be well over eight feet. As I get closer and I drive past it all, I literally saw it was a giant wolf head staring at me through the bramble, or at least just its head sticking out. What's weird is I've looked at other dogman encounters and other reports about having glowing eyes, but this seems like a typical eye shine, like you would if you were to shine your headlights onto a deer. It just didn't feel right though. The head was too huge and there's no reason any wolf head should be up 8 feet off the ground in the middle of thorns and brambles. It still gives me the creeps to think about it. Oh, and I'm sure it doesn't help too that we're surrounded by a national forest in the entire area. So there's that. This happened to me in July of 1985. I was living in Kentucky at the time at an undisclosed location. My family has owned property that's been in my family's generation for a very long time that is surrounded by a bunch of woods. Let me give you a lay of the land. In the front of the house, it's open yard in our driveway, which is roughly 300 yards and leads to a gravel road. To the left side of our house is our vegetable garden, which is about 16 feet by 20 feet and then I would say about another hundred yards of open pasture, and then wood line. Behind our house is probably about twenty to thirty feet, and then more wood line. Now the woods behind the house keeps going and connects with the woods on both sides of the house and pasture. There's also about a hundred or so yards of pasture on the right side of the house, as well, followed by more woods. About fifty yards out on the right side of the house, past the vegetable garden, I have a small tool shed where I keep all my stuff. One night, my wife and I were inside eating dinner and it was around 8 p.m. I remember because it was still sunny outside but getting dark. I started to get an ominous feeling and I noticed the hair starting to stand up on my neck and arms. Now, I should note that I had the windows open for a breeze and out here in Kentucky you could hear the wildlife. I noticed that it was pretty quiet outside. Something wasn't quite right. Of course I wasn't going to tell my wife, so I just brushed it off and continued to have dinner when not even five minutes later, I hear this bang crash sound by the shed. From where I'm sitting, we have a window in which I could perfectly see the shed in the garden. Even in the dark, I was able to make out and see that there wasn't anything visually out of place, which I thought was odd. I decided to go and grab my twenty-two, which I keep by the door, and went to investigate. I just remember walking over to grab my rifle, and right as I put my hand on the door, it's almost like my instinct kicked in. My entire body just told me don't go out there, whatever you do. It was the strangest sensation I've ever felt in my life. It's as if I was frozen in fear. So I sat there for a minute and waited. I didn't hear anything outside that wasn't normally there, and it continued to stay perfectly silent. So much so that you could hear a pin drop. My wife is now scared because she totally senses it too, and I go and I decide to close up all the curtains and lock all the doors. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I just felt in every fiber of my being that it wasn't safe to be outside. Me and my wife decided to go in our bedroom and try and get some sleep for the night. I remember closing my eyes, but there's no way me sleeping was going to happen anytime soon. I must have dozed off because the next thing I remember is my wife waking me up and hushing me. Ended up coming out a panicked whisper. She was telling me that there's somebody outside of our window. Now where we live, I know that's impossible since we are miles away from the nearest neighbor. I turn to look over out the window. Just like out of a horror movie, I see the silhouette of a wolf 
standing upright in our window. The moon was out that night because it was illuminating this thing. Whatever it was, it was standing outside our window. It had sharp pointy ears with little tufts of hair on the top, and its head was massive and shaped like a wolf. Now something to note is that our window was like six to seven feet off the ground. So this thing had to have been tall and standing to even get its head in the whole window view. We have thin curtains that cover our window, just enough to where you can't see anything outside. But if something were to stand in the way, you could definitely see a silhouette. It wasn't even more than five seconds until I first saw it that it started growling and it was so deep and guttural, I'm honestly surprised I didn't urinate myself right there. Then it reached out with its hands and started tapping on the window like it wanted us to let it in. My wife is entirely hysterical and I run out of the room to grab the rifle from earlier. I run back to the front door and grab the gun, not caring what my instincts tell me and open the front door and run outside to the side of the house where this thing is. It takes me maybe 5 to 10 seconds to run out to where the window is, and it's nowhere to be seen. I'm looking all around our house, but I'm not seeing anything. I don't have a flashlight with me, and the only lights are coming from inside the house, and the porch light is just barely illuminating where I am outside the house. I stood outside for a minute or two looking for this thing, and I didn't see anything. What freaks me out is my hair was still standing up, and the forest was still quiet. After about a minute, I walked back in the house and checked up on my wife, who was still hysterical, and asked her what just happened. She said it just left. Her and I weren't sure what to do at that point, so we just sat there and waited for this thing to come back. It never did the rest of the night, and I don't think her and I fell back asleep until about 5 in the morning. This was a long time ago, but that was the only time I've ever encountered such a beast. I've never encountered anything like it since, and hope that I never do. I used to work for the sheriff's office back in Lafayette County in the 2000s. I've since moved on from there. I live in California now and don't experience anything like what I did in that county, specifically the tiny town of Taylor. We used to get calls in all the time, all hours from the night, from some of the more rural residents of strange beings trying to break into people's houses. These beings were described as shaggy, dark, and wolf-like, but standing up on two legs. Many have called and claimed they're being invaded by the Rougarou, and they're not sure what to do. We have sent multiple officers out on location on the suspect of a large animal trying to break in. We've had some of our officers experience things they can't explain, and have had run-ins with the supposed Rougarou themselves. I've even heard stories of these bastards terrorizing people by pushing their faces up against the glasses of homes and looking in, baring their teeth at children and trying to scare people. We even received much darker phone calls. Phone calls involving people panicking, telling the operator this thing is breaking into their house. Officers get there and there's just blood and no one around. Traces of a struggle and break-in, but nothing. Or even worse, other times we've had officers show up to several bodies partially eaten. This creature isn't a joke, and I don't know why it's such a problem in that county. One of our officers told me about how when he showed up to one of the calls, an unknown upright canine attacked his vehicle and almost killed him had he not shot at it. I've heard other officers say they will see it fleeing from the property as soon as they pull up. Or even worse, these things are still in the house. Fortunately, many of the calls we receive are just witnesses seeing these things on their property or looking in their window. In places that are more rural, you'll encounter many more people who have had their livestock picked off entirely. There was an older gentleman who lost every livestock he had. Another gentleman had 16 goats and well over two dozen chickens. All were brutally slaughtered within two months' time. I couldn't even tell you how many dogs and cats go missing on the daily. This territory is theirs. These wolf creatures rule these parts. I know you might not believe a lot of what I'm telling you, but these are phone calls and conversations I experienced for several years, and it didn't stop. I was forced to believe the issue at hand. The only thing bizarre I can really tell you is along with some of the more gruesome cases we dealt with, some unknown branch of the government was usually involved in the aftermath. There were several cases we found bodies, 
either attacked and mutilated by one of these things or eaten to death. Both cases are immediately revoked from our county's jurisdiction and are instead considered a government threat. We are then dismissed from the case. I don't know what's going on, but people are dying. All of that county belongs to them. Don't go there to visit. Don't go sightseeing. Stay far away from that county. This happened to my grandmother back in the early 80s. My grandmother at the time was in her 70s and a part of a senior living center far outside of Lexington, Kentucky. My grandmother wasn't very mobile, and so there would be some days where they would have a special bus that came to pick up the disabled seniors and take them out to do things. I can't remember the name of what she said the service was, but it doesn't matter. This service would swing by the center every week, and I believe she said this occurred in the later part of July. She says she can't remember where exactly they were going, but they were in part of the road where it was heavily forested on both sides, and before she knew it this horrible looking wolf creature was attacking the bus, trying to get in. It jumped on the bus and tried to break the glass to get in, but not before the bus swerved off the road and practically crashed. The crash was pretty heavy and several of the seniors were injured, but none fatal. After the bus swerved and crashed, this wolf creature had broken through the windshield and was trying to get to the driver and the rest of the bus. She said that everyone was screaming and that the driver was trying the best he could to ward this thing off. Shots were then fired before this thing could fully make its way into the bus. There was a cop on the side of the road that she guessed happened to drive by and see this taking place. The wolf creature ran off into the woods and you could hear it howling. This wonderful officer came to our rescue and saved us from this creature that was straight out of hell. The bus was destroyed. While many of them were getting medical care from the EMTs that came, they all had to wait for an emergency to come and transport them back to the senior center. Luckily, no one had experienced anything more than just some bruising and soreness. She went on to tell me that it wasn't even two weeks later that three of the seniors that were on that same bus trip with her had all died of strange circumstances. She said they all three got sick at about the same time and eventually passed in only days. She says the actual written cause of death was cardiac arrest. There was only nine of them on the bus, along with the driver. There are things that she can't explain, and she says that day will always be with her. She's had to seek therapy from it since, and says it caused mild forms of PTSD. She never watches horror movies or anything like that, but I've tried to show her different werewolf movies to see if she could show me what these creatures looked exactly like. The one I remember she really had a reaction to was the end scene in the Van Helsing movie, the scene where he becomes a werewolf and fights this monster vampire. She says it looks similar to that, but much leaner, but just as scary and as fierce looking. She said she hasn't yet seen anything that has been spot on to what she saw that day, just a few that were close. She said the closest thing to what the face looked like was the face of the Van Helsing werewolf. My grandmother passed about 10 years ago, but I always wanted to share her story, and so I had written it down multiple times, and had taken notes. It's something I'll always hold of hers. Take care.